now because we're moving towards a moment in which um, I hope we can also practice our, let's say, political engagement as art historians, as Edith has already reminded us, not only to, in, in theoretical form, but also to having guests that, I guess, know that we support the struggle of Ukraine against the horrible invasion that is taking place near us, near the border, uh, because we're very close actually to the Ukrainian border. I don't know how many of you looked on the map, but there are several kilometers. And uh, without further ado, it is a pleasure and an honor to have Dana Skrinik Miska with us today. Who holds a PhD in history of philosophy, but she's also an art critic. She's an independent curator at the guest lecturer of the educational programs and the head of contemporary art practices in the department uh, uh, of the Lviv National Academy of Arts in Ukraine. Among others, she was co curator of the curatorial project Art of Resistance in Valencia, Spain, in 2022 and the co-curator of the second Pinot of Young Art that was in Markov in Ukraine in 2019. Don't imagine what's now. Please come with us and share your thoughts about decolonization from a very English perspective. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh... Uh, I very uh, appreciate your support. I'm very happy uh, to be here. Uh, decolonization <laughs> in the optics of Ukrainian social critical art after the full scale invasion of Russia. Uh, I want to share with you uh, some of my thoughts and uh, uh, the main intention of mine was uh, to find a way uh, of perceiving, of understanding uh, what is going on in Ukrainian art now and how we, how, how we can understand the process in Ukrainian art. Well, uh, the consequences of paradigmatic shift caused by a full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation into Ukraine are already manifesting themselves in art. My report is devoted to the analysis of this reaction in Ukrainian social critical art. I consider 2022 as one of those dates that Petrovsky considered in the context of a horizontal approach to art history. In my view, uh, the change, changes that are taking place now are comparable to those that appeared in the global world in the late 60s or in 1989. I consider the change of historical moments before the beginning of the full-scale invasion and after it through selective comparative analysis of several cases, uh, several uh, art projects of Ukrainian artists within the frame from 2014, the beginning of the Russian-Ukrainian war, to 2022, first year of full-scale invasion. Susan Buckmore has described the historical moment after the end of the Cold War, the communist state, which is both a historical and the universal state of modernity that is still continuing. However, the year 2022 is a turning point to a new historical moment that is yet to be understood. In the case of Ukraine, as in the other post-Soviet countries, significant aspects of the changing historical moments in connection with the collapse of the USSR can be and have been analyzed in terms of post-colonial theory. My, my approach is that the change of historical moments in Ukraine uh, with the beginning of the full-scale invasion uh, becomes more understandable from the standpoint of decolonial uh, theory. 
Therefore, in my report, based on the works of Ukrainian researchers Katerina Votanova and Svetlana Bidarova, I propose to consider these changes uh, precisely through the optics of postcolonial and decolonial theories. At the same time, the selected artistic project serves as a lens that enables the analysis of this transition by highlighting relevant themes and problems, grasping its historical dynamics. For us Ukrainians, this is primarily liberating in the colonial war. The uh, colonial and postcolonial discourses appear side by side in the discussions which had been intensified in Ukraine after the invasion. Decolonization is understood both as a political process of liberation from empire and as the uh, achievement of self-agency and one's own voice. The theoretical basis of my research includes a few sources. Firstly, uh, the ideas of uh, Madina Tostanova, who applies the decolonial approach to the analysis of the post-Soviet countries and visual art in particular. Tostanova's interpretation of post-colonial decolonial relations is crucial for my research, for, for, for this topic. Yeah, the post-colonial is meant here as an objective condition the geopolitical and geohistorical situation of those who were born and raised in ex-colonial societies. The decolonial is different as it is an option, a choice of how to interpret reality and act upon it. Secondly, supporting the approach of Katerina Botanova, I understand the art in Ukraine as a radical decolonizer of culture. The decolonial approach suggests uh, inventing its own tool to go beyond the epistemology shaped by the West. Institutionally, Ukraine must become uh, a part of the West. For us Ukrainians, this is not a matter of political sympathies, but of physical survival. However, the challenge is to integrate into the West while at the same time shaping and strengthening our own self-agency and subjectivity. It means resistance to the power of the West to represent and determine whose sovereignty is worth fighting for. Therefore, cultural process, uh, processes gain the importance of the power of, of resistance. So I consider social critical art as a tool for achieving to this subjectivity and creating knowledge about ourselves as a sovereign society. Thirdly, I rely on the Svetlana Bideryova's approach, proposed to consider post-colonial and decolonial as a different stages of colonial liberation. In this model, the beginning of a full-scale invasion is seen as a point of transgression from the post-colonial to the decolonial transition, intensified in 2014 and entered the culminating phase in 2022. I propose to contextualize the experience of Ukrainian artists through post-colonial and decolonial lens, groping their art artistic uh, projects by themes. These themes provide uh, an understanding of what Ukrainian is on the level of general symbols, as well as what is explicit and the implicit uh, messages art carries. In my report, I consider art projects centered around the theme of land, place, territory. The common denominator in these projects is the image of, of the flag contextualized in a different way in each of them. Uh, as an artist, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, excuse me, get lost. Uh, Alina Yakubenko's video from 2014 titles flag prapor. Uh, these two words in Russian and Ukrainian respectively mean flag. This video is a reaction to the uh, to the beginning of the Russian full, uh, Russian Ukrainian war and is aimed at the search for a new identity of a person who found himself in a new geopolitical circumstances. The video was shot on uh, Beruchi Island in the uh, Sea of Azov, not far from the Russian Ukrainian border and the front line. The video is a diptych. In the first part, the flag proper, which is Ukrainian yellow blue on one side and Russian tricolor on the uh, on the other, is flapping in the wind. As an artist said in 2014, quotes, the flag is a symbol of appropriation when a newly opened, liberated or captured territory is marked with a flag. Under the influence of uh, external circumstances, the flag changed sides so quickly that it is impossible to determine the symbolism on it. It is probably a metaphor for military operation when the uh, territory changes its borders in a, a few hours. 
uh, this work is about the changeability, relativity and artificiality of any state's borders and uh, one's own citizenship uh, and in general uh, the necessity of such a uh, choice, uh, end of quote. In the second video, a Russian who changed his citizenship to Ukrainian waves the same double-sided flag. Here, the flag symbolizes the search for self-identification of a person who finds himself in, in the borders of geopolitical transformation. Quote, this video is about citizens of Ukraine or people who are in border states, in border ter territories. On the video, the person is driven by conflicting feelings and the inability to make a final choice, comments the artist. So the video problematizes the ambivalence of real physical space and the problematic nature of personal choice. The boundary that essentially marks an existential choice, in this case, is denoted by a flag. However, it seems that in 2014, artistic expression problematizes not so much the state of war itself, not fear, trauma or protest against the war, but rather the re relativity of the borders between the victim country and the aggressor country. There is no victim-aggressor rela relationship in the work at all. The flashing of the flag represents binary positions that construct and, and at the same t time mutually exclude each other. So where is your place then? How and why do you choose it? Basically, the artist visualizes the state of post-colonial ambivalence and in betweenness when people combine fragments of both identities. Komi Bhabha, who proposed this concept, had in mind the real common features of the oppressor and the oppressed. Close to this concept is the idea of hybridity, which assumes that there is no absolute difference between the self and the other. Another important aspect of this ambivalence is delocalization. Without knowing the context, it is not clear which place is represented. Perhaps this is Biruchi Island, perhaps it's Tuzla Spit, where Russia tried to build a dam in 2003, uh, manifesting territorial climbs to Ukraine for the first time since the collapse of the USSR. It also could be Crimea, which was annexed by Russia in 2014. Or it, it can be Zmyini Island, which is also located on the border and became a symbol of the first days of a full-scale invasion. This territory cannot be pre precisely localized because the signified sleeps under the signifier. The literal flickering of the signifier itself gives reason to consider the work through the concept of post-colonial ambivalence and hybridity. The artist seems to make visible this uh, uncertainty and does not give an answer to the question, after all, whose land is this? Because in the video, it is not the land, not the home, but the territory. Uh, the art artist's gaze is aloof and focuses on the flickering as the uh, uncertainty of the borderland. It captures the in-between position. In my opinion, this work speaks about difficulty of self-identification on the border and the fact of uh, on the front line at the point of contact, regardless of the nature of the relationships. Hierarchical, not hierarchical, peaceful military. And most importantly, in 2014, it allowed such ambiguity, which is practically, pra practically Im impossible after a full-scale invasion. Nikita Kadan began traveling to Donbass for the first time in 2014. There appeared a series of forensic sculptures, which the artist created from materials found among the ruins, giving these fragments a new context. By the example of two works of this type, one can see the shift from the post-colonial to the decolonial plane uh, after full-scale invasion. Common to both projects, I mean the next project, is the intention to make visible the voices of the victims to restore their subjectivity through found objects uh, that were part of everyday human life before the war. The word gazetka uh, is made of an iron sheet from a car. Gazetka is from a type of the car, yes, uh, broken by sharp nails. Author found the car in 2015 on the east of Ukraine, in Severodonetsk. The use of a found object of this kind proves the, the horrible reality is much stronger than its representation. Raised on, it, on the flag is itself an experience of the material and the shattered everyday, denied subjectivity and voice. The artist asks, is it possible to imagine the flag of the victims uh, whose expression is not supported by force? Uh,
Can the very destroyed buildings and broken things, animals and plants affected by hostilities be became a flag? This flag embodies uh, the phantasms of the uprising of things, the awakening of the subject where no one expected. Uh, in 2014, the position of Nikita Kadan resonated with other Ukrainian left-wing artists, which implied an, uh, an ambivalent attitude towards both Russia and the West and the institutions of, that represented uh, the Ukrainian state. As Ukrainian artist Nikola Rydney claimed, an artist, uh, quote, an artist as a subject uh, who is in opposition to any power, who is against power as a concept itself, uh, must take into account the complexity of the context where the power has ceased, ceased to be a homogeneous and single enemy. Uh, and quote. Mm -hmm. uh, I interpret this ambivalence as a post-colonial trait that Hapha wrote about. On the level of images, in my opinion, it manifests itself as a desire to talk about victimhood and in general and power in, gen in general as a setter, certain abstract forces, avoiding the need to identify with a specific cultural community against which violence is carried out, with the uh, exception of the international artistic community. In 2014, Kadan stated, now it seems that it is necessary to form the principles related to art during the war. Calling his position in accordance with the principle of radical non-modernity, Kadan considered it necessary to engage in a historical museum, largely distancing himself from the war. As an example of the transition to the coloniality, I consider the work of Stomach Sculpture from 2022. The fragment of uh, metal from the roof of the building in Hostomel, destroyed by uh, artillery missiles, was transformed into a flag-shaped sculpture. Another element of the work is a stone found in the countryside near Cologne. Mm -hmm. The encounter of material evidences from the, place, the places of catastrophe and of European normality creates the tension, showing the shrinking distance between war and peace. In this case, the artist creates opposition by criticizing the West. This criticism sounds as an accusation in his other work, the inscription, We are the price, from 2022. Nikita Kadan describes the war as the price that the country and its people pay not only for their freedom, but for the lack of subjectivity, as the ability to independently decide their fate and defend themselves. Thus, uh, the artist manifests the attitude towards Ukrainians as a tool for achieving geopolitical goals. This otherness is synonymous with being not quite good, uh, not quite as good as the best. The victims are no longer abstract. The real people, residents of Gostoma, were actually asking the artists to testify through their words. Words. Yes, show that you've seen what happened here. And Kadan responds, in words, a specific wish of these people is not to remain uh, invisible, and in this sense, I fulfill uh, it with the means I have. End of words. Working with the found objects that are evidence and witnesses of crime and trauma, Kadan implements in, uh, an act of decolonial radical return in Flostano's term. He gives them back uh, a being in the world of meaning that, me that meets the others to bear witness. The binary position through which the Stomach sculpture is constructed refers to a city that become one of the common symbols of uh, inhuman atrocities. Revealing the connection of this object uh, with a specific place, which is not a territory but a home, helps to understand uh, the attachment to our localities. The opposition to the West in this work and the symbolism of the title increase the scope. It is about reproduction country to their people. This gives reason to interpret these strategies as the colonial, hypothetical, of course. In the context of post-colonial ambivalence, I consider Olya Fedorova's ongoing nomadic photo project, I don't know where I am, but it is my home, which started in 2019. The artist took a transparent flag on her travels, expanding her personal concept of home. She took photos in different landscapes, thus uh, assigning the status of home to an uncertain place. As an artistic gesture, the flag was, suppo was supposed to stop uh, expressing a stable identity and become a less specific, uh, variable and com comprehensive uh, manifesto of a person, person's broad belonging to the surrounding world. A linguistic unit 
uh, is an empty form that is filled with connotations depending on who is looking, says Ola Federer. In the end, a flag made of transparent textile became such an empty form. The flag does not symbolize a state or a country, but an abstract place that marks uh, the home as an empty, empty sign, where the reference is the artist herself. This place can be anywhere. It is deterritorialized, therefore abstract. Actually, this deterritorialization is the essence of the work as its title manifests. I don't know where I am, but this is my home. Uh, as part of this project, Ole Fedorova took photos uh, of the flag in the Sea of Azov in uh, 2019. Uh, until 2022, the artist was focused on the landscape as a certain abstract form that is filled with, with meaning uh, depending on the viewer. Therefore, uh, she exhibited exactly those photos that did not have fragments that would help identify the landscape with a clearly defined place. This series we are taking in Mariupol. As on of 2022, this city was being besieged by the Russian troops for 58 days. After the full-scale invasion, the artist shows the very photo where the silhouette of Azov style a uh, metallurgy plant is visible on the horizon. In Azov Stal, thousands of uh, civilians uh, and hundreds of last Mariupol defenders were hiding from the Russian missiles. Showing a photo from Azov Stal, the artist attached herself to a place that is no longer an identified territory, but a home with clear coordinates and a personal history. In this project, the transparent flag no longer manifests the broad belonging of a nomadic person to the world, but marks an important place for the artist as a member of the society against which terror is carried out. Therefore, the flag uh, begins to symbolize not nomadism, but a close relationship with locality, which was manifested due to trauma. To conclude, uh, polarization of views and focus on one's own locality and cultural identity is the experience of any war, especially in the country under attack. So, on the one hand, the drift, drift of artists in the direction of articulating locality and rootedness as opposed to ambivalence and nomadism seems natural. However, it is important that this self-articulation in the lines of the decolonial approach can be understood as a way of self-creation and restructuring of the value system, system, for value system. By reconnecting with uh, one's own land as a place uh, one ident identifies with, by reimagining re its intention with Russian aggression, artists assert their own voice and the voice of their community members. In a symbolic way, art restores subjectivity and agency, thus performing an act of resistance. In the context of the uh, concept of the colonialized studies of Mignolo and Vazquez, it can be argued that the artistic imagination uh, tra translates this paradigmatic shift into the language of artistic symbols, uh, addressing them directly to our emotions. Thus, art helps uh, to accept this transition, the core of which is existential liberation. In oppressed societies, uh, quote, in oppressed societies, the colonial transcendence of modernity, coloniality through the medium of art is one of the few remaining paths to refuturing, notes Tostanova. Uh, the principal point of this drift, which takes place after 2022 in the practices of Ukrainian arts, even uh, the extre extreme left, is the need to define all identity no longer allowing ambiguity. Thus, uh, I consider post-colonial ambivalence historically mm -hmm. as a feature that marks a certain yeah. stage of overcoming the colonial legacy in Ukrainian social critical art as a kind of hip hip hypothesis. Against uh, the background of the change of historical moments as a paradigmatic shift we are witnessing, uh, there is a growing need to review theoretical framework framework implied to describe and uh, implied for uh, analysis of Ukrainian art. Uh, and uh, the decolonial approach can serve as a local analytic frame for that goal. Thank you for your attention.